Mmm, good soup. Yeah, let's talk about limb soups. So what is the limb soup of a function f as x approaches a? Here's how I think about them. Take an interval, a small interval around a, and find the largest, well, the supremum of the values of f in that interval. And then shrink that interval and see what the limit is as you shrink it. That will be the limb soup of f. And similarly, for limb inf, you take the infimum, so not the minimum, because there might not be a minimum value in this uh, region, but the infimum, so the smallest value these values approach, and then shrink the interval to just a point. For example, take this function. What is the limb soup in this case? So this is what the graph looks like, and then to do the limb soup, I consider uh, consecutive intervals around zero, so for example, uh, an interval like this, and then the maximum would be here or here, uh, then a smaller one, and then the supremum might be here, here, a smaller one, and so on. And then you see that the supremum of those values, as the interval shrinks, goes to zero. So the limb soup in here is zero. So in this case, the limb soup, the limb inf, and the limit itself, they all exist and they are zero because all the values uh, go to zero as x goes to zero. But if we consider instead the function sine of one over x without that x in front, then things change quite a bit. What happens now is that as I consider intervals uh, near zero, no matter how close I get to zero, there will be values that are one in every little interval. No matter how close, there will be a one up here. So the supremum of the values of f, no matter how close I get to zero with these intervals, will be one. And similarly, the infimum will be always minus one. Well, my graph is all bad here, but it's minus one all the time. So in this case, the limb soup is one, the limb inf is minus one, so the limit itself does not exist because these limbs, soups and inf, do not agree.